It's not that I have anything against Elizabeth Warren personally. I don't know Elizabeth Warren. I never met Elizabeth Warren. Not, nothing against her as a person. I just do not believe that she is a candidate who's going to fight for the people. And I think, I believe strongly that that's the reason why they support her so heavily. When I say they, I mean the establishment. See, when you threaten the system, when you threaten the system, the system reflexively goes after you. When you challenge the status quo, the status quo seeks to protect itself. Not unlike a snake protecting its eggs. Uh, Right? That's what the establishment does. And the fact that I'm not seeing any snake bites on Elizabeth Warren, well, that means, that tells me something, guys. That tells me that maybe the establishment isn't afraid of Elizabeth Warren. And if the the establishment is not afraid of Elizabeth Warren, that means she's not the fighter for me. I don't care what she says. I don't care what she's, how many times she says she's a fighter. You know, Mike Tyson, I don't know how many times Mike Tyson said he was a fighter. He didn't have to, because you know what? He knocked people out. And when Elizabeth Warren had an opportunity to knock out people at the Dakota Access Pipeline, she didn't. When Elizabeth Warren had an opportunity to knock people out, Hillary Clinton, and support Bernie Sanders, someone whose policies are more in line with the policies that she herself not only supported back in 2016, but supports now. She didn't. So I know we can overlook these things, and you can make it seem like this is just a grudge we have against Elizabeth Warren, but I just give you tangible reasons why, man. Because if she was a threat to the system, she would be a threat that they would try to silence. There would be more Nate Silvers writing horrible articles about it. They'd be going in. There hasn't been a negative story written about Elizabeth Warren since she went on The Breakfast Club and someone asked her about the Pocahontas thing. You know how long ago that was? That was the last time she had a bad news day. Bernie had a bad news day yesterday. Pete Buttigieg had a couple. And we know they like Pete. So why is it that Elizabeth Warren is getting what appears to be a free ride? And you're going to tell me, oh, it's just because, Johnson, she's just a nice lady, Johnson. Oh, fiddling sticks, Tim Black. You stop it right there. Gosh darn it. I fail to understand why you keep picking on me. Well, well, Elizabeth, I just believe that you're a faker. I don't owe you anything, so go milk yourself. Well, God darn it! Googly doogly dook! That burns my butt cheeks. That burns my hide. That really burns my hide. What we say at Kentucky, somebody like you saying that about me, I'd get my brothers, and we would get my grandma and my manpa and the fiddly sticks, and we would shove them up your eyes, you bald-headed, spoon-headed, pistachio nut brain. I know that was silly, but the point is that Elizabeth Warren does not get attacked like Bernie Sanders gets attacked. And I don't think he gets attacked just because, oh, oh, I wrote the damn bill. That's not why he gets attacked. He don't get attacked because he wrote the damn bill. He gets attacked because he's at their necks and they believe that he's going to be on their necks. The establishment believes that Bernie Sanders will come for them. Now, those people who are watching who may be supportive of Elizabeth Warren, I want you to think about, think back to Elizabeth Warren's most strongest, most strident, negative commentary about the establishment. Picture it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need to come together. Be fighters. Right now, Tim Black. Oh, we got to fight. Oh, I'm ready for it. Oh, I got a plan. Think about it. Put it in your head. Visualize it. Go back to that moment in time. Close your eyes and picture Elizabeth Warren and her spunkiest. The voice is quivering. She's holding that finger up. She's going through her five-point plan of how she's going to have everyone sit down and come to the table and have a conversation. How all of us sitting at the table is going to change something. Yeah, 
and how corruption is stinky corruption, the C word, that horrible word. Oh. Now, open your eyes and I want you to watch this video. What do you do? And I want you all to think about it. Because the answers are not so simple, but I have my ideas. What do you do with an industry who for years spent, what, tens of millions of dollars uh, into phony think tanks, corporately run think tanks, putting stooges up on television, telling the American people, well, the evidence is not clear whether climate change is real or it's not real. They knew that it was real. Their own scientists told them that it was real. What do you do to people who lied in a very bold-faced way, lied to the American people, lied to the media? How do you hold them accountable? How do you hold fossil fuel executives who knew that they were destroying the planet but kept on doing it? We will hold them accountable. Do you see a difference between what Elizabeth Warren, when she's upset, when she's saying how we need to all fight, and she's a fighter, and she's in it for the fight, and all that stuff? Bernie's being very specific about an issue. It's not a general statement about what we're fighting. It's not just corruption. He's talking about fighting a specific industry for a specific reason and saying we need to hold them accountable. That is danger talk. That is risky talk. That's the type of talk that gets smear articles written about you. That's the type of talk that makes the establishment want to come get you. But it doesn't stop there. There's more to that. Let me just, let me just, let me just let me, we're going to question you and H so quickly, but are you talking about civil? So there are right did now, you, there did are Did you hear that? No, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. All- did you see Chris Hayes' reaction to what Bernie said? Guy couldn't even freaking talk. He couldn't even speak. He couldn't even get the words out. He's like, oh, shit, Bernie's, Bernie's talking about putting people in jail. My God. Hold on. You know, you don't mean that 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 uh, these people should should be punished like really punished. I mean, we don't punish people. We don't punish corporations. We don't we don't really punish the people. I mean, we might find it, but we don't actually. Put, can you talk about inside a jail with the riffraff? You mean real jail for 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 these crimes? What? Come on. Let me let me just. We're going to get a question you and H so quickly, but. Are you talking about civil? So there are right now there are lawsuits precisely on this. That's on the civil side. But are you you seem to be indicating criminal accountability? I'm not a lawyer, and I'll need a good attorney general to help me out on this one. But this is what I think. It is one thing you're producing a product, and you produce the product, and then you learn that the product that you're producing is killing people, right? Which is the case, say, with the Purdue and uh, Johnson and Johnson opioid mm-hmm. manufacturers. The evidence is pretty clear that in terms of Purdue and Johnson & Johnson, they learned at a certain point that the opioids they were producing were causing an epidemic and people were dying. And you know what they did? They continued to produce it and hire more salesmen to go out and sell it. What do you do with those folks? Now, because you have in this country, which is a subject for another discussion, a corrupt criminal justice system CEOs and millionaires don't go to jail. People go to jail, kids go to jail for selling marijuana, but if you kill hundreds of people or thousands of people and you're a CEO and a billionaire, you don't go to jail. That's the nature of the system in America. That's a system I intend to change. As you can see, there's a difference between Bernie going directly at these people, these organizations, these corporations, these powerful, powerful people with millions, if not billions of dollars at their disposal, going after them directly, calling them out and leaving no question about why and saying, yeah, I'm going to get an attorney general and we're going to bring charges. We're going to treat them the same way we would treat anybody else in this country who killed people knowingly. 
for money. Pretty hard to slip away. Pretty hard to be lost in translation, what he's talking about. Because what he's saying is very direct. Now, are you still picturing? Remember that thing I told you to picture about Elizabeth Warren? When she's talking tough about fighting for you and fighting the good fight and having a plan for that? Is she talking about directly going after the powers that be? I don't think she is, Johnson. I think she doesn't mean what she says. I think even what she says is watered down. It's watered down. It's nowhere in anywhere compare. I'm tired of people comparing Bernie and Elizabeth. Lord have mercy. There, there are, there's a, you can drive a tractor trailer through the distance between the two. But it gets worse because Bernie continues. But you ask me a question, and I can see the tone in your voices. You're not sure. But what do you do if executives knew that the product they were producing was destroying the planet and they continue to do it? Do you think that that might be subject to criminal charges? I don't know. Oh! I'm not running for president. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think it's something we should look at. You know, there are people out there who watch Chris Hayes and they, um, they watch him. They, they, they spend their time. They open their brains up and they let this guy talk to them. He has no backbone at all. His, I don't even know how he stands up, how he walks around. He's a jellyfish. I bet if Bernie's describing executives who knew that their product was killing people, Purdue people, make the opiates, knew it and said, so what? Keep selling it, Johnson. It's selling like hotcakes. We all got to die sometime. Without even giving you the benefit to decide, hey, do I want to die on this, though? Yeah, maybe I want to die with my grandbabies around me at 82 instead of 30. They made that decision for people. And when he said that to Chris Hayes, you don't think these people should be punished for that? Chris Hayes' response is, I don't know. I'm not running for president. I don't know. I'm supposed to have an opinion about morality of life and death for the people who I'm supposed to be a, a steward of information for. This mofo tearing into Kevin from the office. I like Slinkies. I'm like Slinkies all the time. What kind of a mofo is this? This guy's an educated person. Chris Hayes is smart enough to know. But I bet you, here, look, guys, here's the, here's the real kick in the nuts, guys. Ladies, kicking the ovaries. Let's play fair, ladies. I bet if Bernie was talking about a kid who sold drugs. And Bernie said, you think that person should be locked up for selling those drugs? I'm sure Chris would be like, yeah, have an opinion then. Yeah, it should be locked up. It's against the law to sell drugs. Or if he said, hey, there was a woman who was still in welfare. She got a job, but she kept a welfare check coming just because she wanted to put a little bit of money away because she wanted to, you know, buy a car. Think she should go to jail? Well, yeah, it's against the law. Yeah, it should be against the law. It's morally wrong. She knew it was wrong when she did it. But when you ask him, should rich-ass execs who killed thousands of people. This mofo has no opinion. Case closed, face closed. Now back to Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren ain't calling these people out like that. And when she does call them out, if she did call them out to that extent, if the people really thought Elizabeth Warren was coming for them, Elizabeth Warren would be smeared all day because the system protects itself. And that's how you know they're not the same. And that's why I say she's getting a free ride. Because she is, Johnson. It's so bad. It's so, so bad. So much of a free ride that, uh, like this, Johnson. 
Some say what media likes best about Elizabeth Warren is she's not Bernie Sanders. Man, ain't that something? All these people talking about, hey, you might as well get Elizabeth Warren. She's just as good as Bernie. The only reason why the media lets her roll like she rolls is because she is not Bernie Sanders. But you keep telling me how she so much is. Man, I'm trying to tell you, these people just want viewership on their shows. They just want to lie to you, Johnson, and lie. Oh, my God. I cannot play you this clip, but I just want you to know, folks. When Elizabeth Warren was on the Stephen Colbert show, it was the most disgusting, lame activity known to man. Now, I didn't watch the entire thing. I watched one clip. So maybe she was great otherwise. But I'm going to tell you something, guys. Here's the deal. If you are championing a policy, you, if you are championing a policy and it's your, you're driven to support this policy to get this thing implemented because you are running for president, you are running for president to change this thing, to solve this problem that will change many, many lives, that will not only change lives, but change futures, not just of the individuals, but of their children, their offspring. Neighborhoods, communities will be changed. People will be affected all across the country. If that's what you are doing, and if you just so happen to end up on a late night TV show by a comedian, and he is better at defending your benchmark, one of your benchmark legislative pieces, one of your big plans, that shows that you are full of caca. Elizabeth Warren went on Stephen Colbert's show, and Stephen Colbert did a better job of defending Medicare fraud than she did. Now, you can tell me, you know, you can piss on my head and tell me it's rain, but as soon as I smell the urine, I'm going to know something, Johnson. All right. Stop lying to me, man. Stop telling me how she's so progressive. Stop doing it. If she was progressive, she'd be a threat. And threats are not taken lightly. Threats have problems. Threats get smears. Threats get negative articles written about them. Threats get incoming fire because threats are challenging power. And threats are calling out the establishment. And threats are talking about changing the system and manipulating and making it straighten, getting out people and prosecuting bad guys, putting people in jail, fundamentally changing, aggressively changing. The country, and she ain't doing none of that. She's willing to compromise. That's why she there. Don't get it twisted.